How's it going fellow commanders? This is Mike with Hawks Gaming and today I'm going to show you how to have the very best start in Elite Dangerous in 2020. If you are a brand new commander in Elite Dangerous, make sure you complete some of the training simulations. You can't become filthy rich in this game if you don't know how to fly your ship. Make sure you complete basic flight as well as docking and travel, especially docking and travel. Complete the combat mission at least once and you will most definitely see mining in this video. That's a fact. In this money making guide we are going to highlight 5 different ships starting with the Sidewinder and we are going to make over 900 million credits. Flying this Sidewinder is like flying a box of tissue paper. But never fear Commander, I am here to keep you safe and sound in the blackness of space. All this space cheddar isn't going to make itself, so let's get out to a high resource extraction site and make at least 1.75 million credits. I could let the auto launch feature take me out of the space station by itself, but why do that when you can just fly out like a psychopath on your own? If you do fly out of the mail slot like a psychopath, just make sure not to hit anybody going over 100. If you do, the space popos might kick you in the face. Now that we're outside the space station, let's go over a few features that you'll find on every single spaceship in Elite Dangerous. To the left of the radar in the center is what you have targeted, and right now it's the space station. That target will also give you a brief description in the window to the left. The center is your radar. You are the little triangle in the center and the field of view is that triangle out in front of that. You will see a heat indicator on your left and you will also see a speed indicator on your right. On my radar you see little gray boxes elevated upwards and you see some blue boxes and blue triangles elevated downwards and upwards. The blue boxes means the ship's weapon points are not deployed, and the triangles means that their weapon points are definitely deployed. The gray boxes were likely FSD warp trails from ships leaving the system. To the right of your radar is your ship hologram. Around that are three little rings which represent your shields. When your shields go down, you'll start to take hull damage, which is represented by the percentage marker down below. Right now I'm at 100%, which is a good thing. To the left of your heat gauge is the target glow. The solid color dot means the target is in front, a hollow one means it's behind. To the right of your ship you'll notice the systems, engines, and weapons power supply you currently have on hand right now. You are most definitely going to want to make a hotkey for your systems, engines, and weapons. Let's say an evil commander targets you with weapons fire. You're going to want to slam a whole bunch of power into your system so the weapons actually do less damage to you. Let's say you want to put the pedal to the metal, so you just put all pips into engines and it'll refresh so much faster. Or let's say you got weapons on target and there's no danger in you getting shot, so why not just put full pips to weapons so you can shoot them for even longer. One example of what you'll see later on is full pips to weapons when I'm mining for low temperature diamonds. Although I'm doing this in LHS 3447, you can do this as a brand new commander in Drami in the starter system. Resource extraction sites can be found around planets that have rings. Once you are within a thousand light seconds of the planet, it will appear in the navigation list in your computer. Just make sure to use this method in high resource extraction sites, you're going to yield the most money per hour. Even though we're going to be doing combat, which is inherently dangerous, I'm going to show you how to do it in a safe way. But let's get our hard points out and get on to business. No contacts quite yet, but there will be. Oh, there will be. Alright, so rule number one when you're doing this, don't get overzealous and shoot the ships too soon. Always make sure your scan goes through and you make sure that they're wanted before you even fire your first round. If you end up shooting the wanted ship before your scan goes off, the space popos will buck you down with extreme prejudice, so keep that in mind. They will hate you equally. You are flying around in a box of space Kleenex, so if the popos sneeze on you, you are definitely going to space die. So let's keep space dying to a minimum, okay commanders? The other thing that is going to keep you safe doing this method is waiting until the last second to lay the smack down on the pirates. I generally like to wait till the ship is around 40% and then just let them have it with everything I have. The big thing is, is you need to kill them within 20 seconds of doing damage to them. This ensures you get the credit for the kill as well as the bounty even though the space popos are doing the majority of the damage for you. It looks like we have another beef up in front of us so let's get our butts over there and try to get credit for this kill as well. Now this pirate is getting laid into, I don't suspect he's going to last for very long but I do need to make sure that scan goes off before letting him have it. You gotta love those perfectly timed strafing runs, that should be plenty of damage to knock him out of the game, I'm pretty sure the cops are going to get him for me, I'm just going to hang out and watch it happen. Mm-hmm, I reckon that guy had it coming to him. Mm -hmm. 
let me show you what you need to do if you do accidentally attack the wrong ship. What you're going to do is you're going to go over to your navigation panel, check out the little star map there, and look for a low security system. You're going to want to immediately put all power to your systems and the remaining power to your engines, get the heck out of there, and engage your FSD. Once you engage your FSD, warp out to one of those green systems and pay your fine at the space dock. Those first two ships we killed were no bueno, so I logged out to the main menu and then back into the game to refresh the ship spawn. Whenever your ship appears in the red sites, it will trigger a bunch of bandits and cops to spawn. Whenever I enter a resource extraction site, the game seems to like to spawn either a bunch of small ships, some small or medium ships, or a bunch of medium and large ships, which hopefully this is a whole bunch of medium large ships. Well, 98k is definitely doing much better, so let's hope we keep raking it in or even do better than that. Nice, 148k, I'll take that for sure. It looks like we have definitely forespawned exactly what we were looking for. Let's see how much this ship's gonna give us. Cha-ching! Oh sweet, this is the deadly anaconda, so it should yield us quite a bit of space cheddar. I bet you when this pilot woke up today, he had no idea he was going to get completely smoked by the most badass Sidewinder pilot in history. But it is what it is. I could be wrong, but I do think I landed the fatal blow, so take that, Mr. Space Pirate, take that. Your glorious death goes to a noble cause, good sir, so thank you very much. Cha-ching! 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 Cha, well, in that case, we always got room for one more. Might as well head on out of here with at least 2 million, even though we only need 1.75 million. Smoke this guy and get the heck out of here, what do you think? Cha-ching! Now that we're back safe on the space station, let's cash in all those bounty vouchers and get ourselves into our very next ship, which is going to be the Adder. From takeoff to landing, it took me an hour and 15 minutes to make this 2.1 million. To cash in your bounty vouchers, you're going to need to click on contacts, and then after you click on contacts, go up to the very top left and click on the authority contact. After you click on that button, you'll pull up a list of bounty vouchers you can cash in. As you can see, $2.1 million. Let's get that cashed in so we can buy our next ship. The next method we'll be using to make money will be mining, so there will be no combat involved whatsoever. Although there is the opportunity to get blown into space dust, but that's for a later time. Let's discuss hard points. You'd be better off getting a 2D and a 1D, although I have three 1Ds in this one right now. For utility mounts, I have absolutely nothing in there. If you want, you can put a heat sink in there. For the core internals, we are going to derate everything except for the frame shift drive and the power distributor, which will be in an A class. You do not want to skimp on either one of those, you want them in an A class. For the optional internals, we are going to go with a 3E cargo rack, a 3E collector limpet, 2E cargo rack, 2A refinery, which gives you 6 bins, which is awesome, a 1A prospector limpet, and a 1A fuel scoop. You're also going to need a detailed surface scanner to find where the deposits are located. Now that I showed you the ship layout, let me show you how to track down modules with this handy tool called eddb.io. Once you clicked on the stations button, you can go ahead and put your reference system, which is the current system that you're in right now. For me, that happens to be LHS3447. Once you do that, you can go up to the station cells modules and then search for what you're looking for. Once you have typed in the module or modules you're looking for into the station cells modules tab, you just go down below and click the find stations button. EDDB.io will then generate a list of systems that are listed from the closest to you to the furthest away in order. This tool will help you track down modules with the greatest of ease as well as do so much more. If you have not used eddb.io before, I highly recommend you give it a try. The next resource I want to show you is ED Tools. It is referred to as the Miner's Tool. Let me refresh the Miner's Tool to make sure we are getting the most up-to-date information. It looks like we will be making our cell and Felice stock and we will be doing all the low temperature diamond mining in Baran. The planet Baran 2 in that system has three overlapping low temperature diamond hotspots, which is absolutely badassery. 
I highly recommend that you set up your main base of operations in any system that is just one jump away from Baran. This will greatly speed up your mining runs when you go to mine and then sell. I want you to keep in mind you're going to be doing the Kessel run in under 10 parsecs without any shields. This is very dangerous. You want to make sure you don't bounce off any rocks out in the asteroid field and you most definitely do not want to get interdicted by pirates. Remember when I called the Sidewinder a box of tissue paper with only two pieces of tissues? Well this is just the box itself without any tissue to protect you from outer space. I'm not trying to scare off any new commanders from trying this tactic, but I just want to point out the brutal realities of what can happen to you if you screw up, even just once. Now that we're here in the system, you will need your detailed surface scanner to scan the rings. Once you scan the rings, you will be able to see the three overlapping low temperature diamond hotspots. Where you enter is going to be key. You want to make sure you put yourself in between the two small deposits and well within the ring of that big larger one in the background. Entering into the right spot is crucial. I can't stress that enough, so make sure you go in on the same approach that I'm attempting right now. If you go into the wrong area, you risk the possibility of getting much less low temperature diamonds for your effort. We're also going to make sure we drop into a nice thick yellow patch of rings, which means it's densely packed with asteroids. Now that we've dropped into the rings, it's going to trigger pirates to spawn as well as NPC mining vessels. You most definitely want to make sure the pirates scan you before you even bring one single piece of low temperature diamonds onto your ship. If you have one piece of valuables in your cargo hold, you are going to die right now. Alright, so before we get started, let's discuss fire groups for this ship. In my first fire group, I have the Discovery Scanner and Detailed Surface Scanner. You know, I could just delete it right now, but I'm lazy. For the second fire group, I have my Prospector Limpet on 1 and my Collector Limpet on 2. For the last fire group, it's Mining Lasers on 1 and Collector Limpets on 2. On this run, we only have 12 Collector Limpets to work with, so every single Limpet matters. We're going to have to mine every single rock that we come up with that has low temperature diamonds inside of it. Let's check the contacts really quick. I'm pretty sure this guy's a pirate, but likely he's messing with that Type 6 NPC right now. At this point, we should be safe to start mining, so let's get on with it. As you can see, these three mining lasers are completely destroying my energy level on my weapons bar. And it always helps to lower your cargo scoop so you can actually daggone pick up the low temperature diamonds when you mine them. I should have gone with a class 2 mining laser as well as a class 1 mining laser instead of these three class 1 mining lasers. If I would have went with that configuration it would have saved me 0.25 watts of power which is actually quite a lot for this distributor. That would allow me more time to burn these rocks which would mean more chunks faster. There are differences between the two mining lasers, we might as well cover them right now. A 2D mining laser costs 0.75 watts of power. It also has the opportunity to blow off large chunks of these low temperature diamonds. The 1D mining lasers use 0.5 watts of power, but blow off small chunks in the process. Using 1D mining lasers will blow off many more chunks than the 2D mining lasers. If your distributor can handle it, you are much better off using a 2D mining laser than you are using a 1D mining laser like I'm using right now. Even having all four pips to weapons right now, my distributor cannot keep up with the power consumption that those three 1D mining lasers are using. My only saving grace is I am able to keep the chunks coming out fast enough to where none of my limpets are sitting around waiting for me to have something to pick up. As long as I don't get interdicted by pirates and smoked on the way back to sell all these low temperature diamonds, I should be able to net over 20 million, which will get us in our next ship. That next ship is going to have a huge jump range compared to this one, a much larger cargo space, and it is going to be able to farm these low temperature diamonds like a freaking boss. Oh well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's focus on the task at hand. So by now you should have noticed that I have matched the rotation of this asteroid and I'm making the chunks fly out and underneath of my ship. This helps your collector limpets in two ways. The first way is the chunks are being kicked out underneath of the ship so it makes them faster to pick up, as well as kick those chunks away from the spinning asteroid. Never forget, limpet lives matter too, especially on this trip when we hardly have any to begin with. Ah, finally, that took like a freaking month of Sundays. Alright, let's find ourselves another target. Hopefully this one is going to be a good one, although it's kind of rotating and it's oddly shaped. Let's hope for the best. The next rock we find that turns out to be half decent, I am definitely going to speed up the footage by at least four to five times so we don't have to suffer through the eye bleeding strain. 
Same method as before, dumping all power into weapons, and I am going to blow my complete load into this. As soon as I get the no target collection warning, I am going to smash the mining laser button each and every time. Just like you should smash that like button because this is an awesome video, am I right? Ah, begging for likes and shares, oh the humanity. And while you're smashing that like button, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This will ensure that you stay up to date with every single Elite Dangerous update that I come out with. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you can be the very first to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. I hope this video and all future Elite Dangerous videos help your gameplay. Now that I've done the shameless plug, let's get back to raking in a whole bunch of space cheddar. Now that this asteroid is depleted, let's just skip to the end where I'm just about to have my cargo racks completely filled up as well as my hopper. Then we can get the heck out of here and spend all this daggone space cheddar we're fixing to make. Unless of course I get myself completely owned and interdicted by pirates. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, that should do it even though I still have a little bit of low temperature diamonds left in this rock. There we go. Let's get the heck out of here and go to our cell location. Alright, so remember when I said box of tissue paper without having any tissues to protect us from the harshness of reality? This adder has absolutely no shields, and we are most definitely going to be interdicted, or at least attempted to be interdicted on our way back to our cell location. On our way to the cell location, I will show any instance of us getting interdicted, and we're going to find out if I either live or die. Alright, fingers crossed, let's hope we can do this Kessel run in under 10 parsecs. Ah, uh, wonderful, we just got a pirate message. Chances are we are gonna be interdicted here. Let's try to get the heck out of here, or crap. There is a chance that my FSD will engage. I'm about halfway there now. Let's let's try and see if we can make this. All right, all right, crap. I'm gonna end up getting myself killed. I better just go ahead and try to make the escape vector and then engage the FSD afterwards. We absolutely cannot take the chance of getting interdicted and pulled back into normal space. If we do, we are going to die. I'm serious, we have no shields, and I am going to space die if we can't pull this off. All right, we have evaded interdiction. Let's point to the target and get the heck out of this system. Hopefully this doesn't happen again. That awkward moment when you know it's gonna happen again, you just hope it doesn't happen again. Yep, here we go again. I guess I'll just fuel scoop with the quickness and get the heck out of here, hopefully. Kind of sucks now, even though I'm close to the end of my journey, my fuel tank is getting very low and I am forced into fuel scooping even though I don't want to. I guess I could land on a space station somewhere and snag up some fuel that way, but I'd rather just get this daggone run over with and get into my next ship. My spidey sensors are tingling, I should be getting attacked any second, of course I am. Alright, let's just get this over with, try to get out of this interdiction as fast as possible. Don't let getting interdicted by an NPC scare you off too much. It's really easy to get out of as long as it's an NPC. If it's an actual player, you're probably going to be screwed. I highly recommend you make all these mining runs in solo instead of doing it in open play. Make no mistake, you will not be able to evade a person who happens to be a pro. NPCs are one thing, players are totally different. If you attempt the Kessel Run in live, I tip my hat to you, Commander. Believe me, you're either going to make it, it's going to be a white knuckle ride or you're just gonna be space dust we made it to Feliz stock heck yeah we get to sell off all those low temperature diamonds once we sell all these off to the space station we are gonna most definitely buy our asp explorer and get that suited up for the next run we interrupt our regular scheduled program to bring you this breaking news announcement from frontier developments notice regarding supply and demand of high-end materials all right, commanders, I'll leave this paused right here so you can read over the patch notes and I'll just give you the too long didn't read version of it. Essentially, there was a nerf. It didn't involve the actual mining itself, but it involved the selling of all the materials that you did mine up. Through Frontier's infinite wisdom or complete incompetence, however you want to look at it, they adjusted the supply and demand on void opals and painite and forgot to do that on low temperature diamonds. Okay, let's head over to the miner's tool and check the low temperature diamonds demand. You're going to see this is pre-nerf. There are so many tens of thousands in demand, even some that are in the hundreds of thousands. Now here's the rub. They determine the demand price based off of what you currently have in your cargo hold. So that kind of sucks. Notice how low the numbers are on the demand. The highest one is around 4,000 and everything else is little bitty. Not to mention the best price has been slashed dramatically. They used to sell for 1.6 million. 
All right, so here we are on pay night and it is the exact same thing. Prices have been slashed dramatically about in half, but the demand is horrible. There's hardly any demand at all. I will say quite a few other commanders are kind of pissed off about this change and I don't blame them in the least. The supply and demand mechanic is already in the game for all items that you can buy or sell. The main reason why low temperature diamonds seem unaffected is because there is such a huge demand in the tens of thousands as you saw before. It wouldn't matter how many hundreds of them you had in your cargo hold, it's not going to affect the selling price whatsoever. Before you grab your pitchforks and torches, let me just go ahead and say that I'm pretty sure the FDev team is going to adjust the demand. They're going to up the levels just a little bit. They're going to most definitely drop the levels on the low temperature diamonds. But for Void Opals and Painite and all the other precious minerals, I believe that they are going to up the demand a little bit. Because right now, as you saw before, it is screwed over to try to sell anything other than low temperature diamonds. People who mine in a wing can no longer sell in the same location. If you mine in a large ship, it'll be far less profitable than medium or small ships, which is kind of stupid. It seems that Python is king once again, like that's a big huge surprise. Every other ship got kind of screwed over, but the Python got a buff for some reason. Heh <laughs> imagine that. You will understand why once you see my python run. As it stands now, just expect to do twice as many trips for the exact same amount of money. Except for in the python, of course, because it's king. Alright, enough complaining. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. If you do want to check out the patch notes, I highly recommend you do that. It'll give you more insight, but I hope this helped. There's one last thing I will mention as we land here to sell our low temperature diamonds is that the serious atmospheric passenger missions are just about as profitable as mining now, except for in the Python, of course. Although I did not feature that method of making money in this video, you can look it up on YouTube. It is a very easy find. I have done many serious passenger missions back in the day, and I will say it is mind-numbing and repetitive, but it is definitely worth it. It is a good method for making money. It is now time to sell our 18 low-temperature diamonds. From takeoff to landing, we were out there for 45 minutes. That's as long as it took to do this round trip mission. And that 45 minutes of work in this adder is going to net us over 21 million credits, which is absolutely awesome for the time invested. With this adder, having a 2A refinery makes it really awesome. You get an extra six cargo slots, basically, and that equals out to 6.7 million. That is amazing. Now that we have the money we need, let's get ourselves in the Ass Explorer and get it outfitted. To completely outfit it is going to cost you 20 and a half million the way I have it set up right now. Let's talk hard points on your Asp Explorer. I have a 2B seismic launcher and I also have a 1D abrasion blaster. I also have four 1D mining lasers, which I do not recommend you do. Ideally, you should have a 2D mining laser and a 1D mining laser. Just go ahead and skip the other two 1D mining lasers. Your power distributor just won't have the juice to run all this. The seismic charge launcher and the abrasion blaster are there just in case we find some core asteroids. In the utility mounts, I have a pulse wave analyzer. This is crucial to help you find the cored asteroids. You need to have this. Time to check out the core internals that we have in here. Lightweight alloy, 5A power plant, 5B thrusters. If you want to skimp and get a 5D, you can to save on money. 5A frame shift drive, 4D life support, 4A power distributor, 5D sensors, and the fuel tank that the ship comes with. Last but not least, the optional internal section, where we are going to have a 6E cargo rack, 5A collector limpet, 3A collector limpet that gives us 5 total limpets, a 3A prospector limpet, a 3A shield generator, 2A refinery that you just swap over from your other ship, and you're going to have a 2A fuel scoop in this. Detailed surface scanner so you can find the hot spots. This loadout will give us 70 total slots to carry our precious minerals in, which will net us over 82 million credits. This time I am approaching the triple hot spot at a different angle. I'm actually approaching it towards the planet instead of away, but I am going to try to put myself basically in the same location I always mine in. I have checked many other entry locations and this one that I keep showing you over and over is the very best one that I have found. I always net the most low temperature diamonds in the quickest amount of time. I know I said this on our adder run, but make sure you always drop into the rings in the yellow section. That is where it's going to be most densely packed. On this run with the Asp Explorer, I'm estimating that it's going to take about an hour and 25 minutes to complete this run, from takeoff to landing. Now that we're in the rings and we're waiting for the bad guys to scan us, let's go over our fire groups. On the first fire group, we have the Pulse Wave Analyzer on 1, second group Prospector on 1, Collector Limpets on 2, Fire Group 3, all my mining lasers on 1, Collector Limpets on 2, 
And the final fire group, I have the seismic charge launcher on one, abrasion blaster on two. All right, now if these lazy pirates would just go ahead and scan us, there you go, we can get on to business. All right, so this ship is more maneuverable. It has a bigger cargo hold. It is faster. It is going to mine up all these low temperature diamonds way faster than the adder ever could. We also have five collector limpets now, as well as two prospecting limpets. And having that extra prospecting limpet will speed up the process considerably. Just like in the adder, I will chew through this rock in the asp and show you just how fast it goes in real time without speeding up the footage. Now if I had equipped this ass explorer with a 2D mining laser and a 1D mining laser instead of the four 1D mining lasers, I would be able to chew through this rock faster. This unengineered power distributor just doesn't have enough power to keep those four mining lasers fed. So go with the 2D and the 1D mining laser. I highly recommend it. You will get out of this field a little bit faster, maybe five to 10 minutes faster. With this current loadout having four mining lasers, I am barely able to keep up with my collector limpets. I mean, I am barely able to keep up. Barely being able to keep up is still okay though. We're only talking about shaving off a few minutes extra in the field if you do go with the 2D mining laser and the single 1D mining laser. Just before I came out in the field, I ended up selling my adder because I will never use that again. However, this ship right here, the Asp Explorer, is going to be one of your very, very favorite ships. Although you'll probably only make one run mining in this ship before you end up upgrading to the Python, the glorious Python, this Asp Explorer will make an excellent exploration vehicle. This is also my go-to ship for harvesting all my engineering materials. So whatever you do, do not sell the ass for quick cash. It is most definitely a keeper. You're going to be using this ship quite a bit playing in Elite Dangerous. The Asp Explorer will likely be the very first ship that you try engineering on. Once you get this FSD upgraded, it will literally double its jump range and already has an awesome jump range as it is. As funny as this sounds, this is probably my second favorite ship in the game just because I spend so much time in it. Of course, my favorite ship is going to be the glorious Python just because it can do everything in the game exceptionally well. Never fear, we will have plenty of time to talk about the glorious Python once we get to that stage in this how-to video. But right now we are in the Asp Explorer, so I will do most of my talking about how awesome this ship is. Even without engineering, this Asp Explorer is an amazing ship. With it, it is next level. I believe my engineered Asp has pretty close to daggone 67 light year jump range, which is amazing. This ship handles like a dream and is extremely maneuverable. Well, finally, we are done doing that asteroid. Now let's get on to the other one and I'm going to speed up this footage. After I mine every asteroid, I hit the pulse wave analyzer to see if I could find any core asteroids in the distance. I didn't see any candidates for any core asteroids, so let's see if this rock right here is going to yield any good low temperature diamond content, which it is half decent, it's over 20%. As I fly into the asteroid, I'm going to try and match its trajectory or its rotation so my little limpets don't get themselves completely destroyed on the rock surface. Once you match the trajectory, you should be able to pretty much sit in the exact same spot. Of course, if you don't, then you're going to have to move around like I'm doing so I don't get my little limpets buffed down. One thing I forgot to mention is before you leave your space station, make sure you load up on as many limpets as possible. It's okay to have too many. It really sucks when you don't have enough. All right, so that asteroid is depleted. Let's fast forward to the end where I wrap up this run in the Asp Explorer. It looks like we just filled up our refinery and our cargo is at max, so we're ready to head on out of here. Let's hope I don't get myself interdicted. We made it to Privilov Port without getting interdicted at all. This is the place that is offering the highest price for my low temperature diamonds. Total time from taking off to landing was 1 hour and 15 minutes. It was actually a pretty daggone good time. I think I could have done better if I had the 2D mining laser and one 1D mining laser though. This trip is going to net us a little over 82 million, which is just enough to buy the python and pimp it out just the way I'm about to show you, which is just about 82 million. <laughs> Perfection. Time to pawn off these 64 low temperature diamonds, which is going to net us a little over 75 million. Now we just have to wait for the hopper to empty out into our cargo racks and then we'll pawn off these last remaining six low temperature diamonds and then we'll move on to the python. There was another 7 million for what was in the hopper which brings us up to a little over 82 million. Alright so here we go, the myth, the legend, the glorious python. Alright so it is that bat time, let's go ahead and discuss hard points. In this build we are going with three 2D mining lasers, 
one 2B seismic charge launcher, and an abrasion blaster. We will see cord asteroids on this run, I promise. All right, let's check out our utility mounts. I have the pulse wave analyzer in here and nothing else. Time to move on to core internals. Going to keep the lightweight alloy, 6B power plant, 6B thrusters. You can go with 6D if you need to skimp on money, 5A frame drive, 4D life support, 7A power distributor, 6D sensors, and the fuel tank it comes with. For optional internals, we went with three 6E cargo racks, which gives us a huge cargo capacity compared to the Asp Explorer. With the Python, we're able able to hold two 5A collector limpets which gives us a total of six collector limpets which is awesome as well. A 4A shield generator, a 3A fuel scoop, a 3A prospector limpet which gives us two limpets, 2A refinery, detailed surface scanner, and away we go. Entering into the rings in the same space I always do, I'm going to try to find a nice nice thick patch of yellow band to farm in and let's get down to business. Here's the thing about the Python. I suspect we're probably only gonna take about 45 more minutes to load up on three times as many low temperature diamonds. This time I am going to turn on my night vision which does help find the cord asteroids a little bit better. Time to go over fire groups. For the first fire group, I have my pulse wave analyzer on one. Second fire group, I have my prospect Olympus on one, collector Olympus on two. Fire group three is mining lasers on one, collector Olympus on two. The final fire group is abrasion blaster on one and the seismic launcher on two. Well, I wait for the lazy pirates to finally scan us. I'm going to pop off the pulse wave analyzer a few times just to see if I can find any cord asteroids right away in the beginning. Unfortunately, I do not see any candidates. So we might as well just hop off in here and start mining up these diamonds. All right, our very first asteroid it is an amazing rock. It has a bunch of low temperature diamonds in there. Now let's see how fast the Python can mine this up. And it is going to be much faster than the Asp Explorer or the Adder. Now check it out. As you can see, my power distributor has all kinds of power to run all three of these 2D lasers. This goes to show just how powerful 2D mining lasers are as long as your distributor can handle the power draw. And seeing as how we are using 2D mining lasers, every single chunk that comes off this asteroid is going to be considered a large chunk. At this point, we are mining a little bit faster than our collector limpets can collect all the pieces, which isn't a bad thing because you will be prospecting as soon as you get done farming out all of this asteroid. The other thing you should notice as well in this footage is just how fast I am processing all those low temperature diamonds. That is because every single chunk we blow off the asteroid is considered a large chunk. Now that I got this asteroid all mined up, it is time to fire off the pulse wave analyzer once again to see if we can find any core asteroids in the distance. If we do not find any candidates, then we will fire off two prospector limpets into the nearest asteroids. Unfortunately, I do not see any candidates, so I am going to prospect the next stone, which turned out to be another great find. Just like the other two ships, I'm going to speed up this section of the video to about four to five times speed. As I approach the asteroid, I'm going to once again try my very best to match the axis of rotation so I don't get any of my limpets killed. Unfortunately, I did not match the rotation properly, but I did try my very best to keep my prospect limpets away from big giant jagged edges of the stone. Now that the asteroid is mined out, I'm going to take the opportunity to fire off the pulse wave analyzer again to see if we can find any deep core asteroids. What you're about to see is my very first candidate. That one off in the distance to the right looks very bright and it is the right shape. Let's get ourselves a little bit closer and fire off another pulse wave analyzer scan and it still looks great. The perfect shape, very bright compared to that one in the background that you see off in the distance. This one is most definitely worthy of a prospector limpet, although if you do want to make sure, all you have to do is get right up on it and see if it has any fissures on the surface. I am pretty sure this is a core asteroid, so I am going to fire the prospector limpet. And there she is, she is most definitely a core asteroid. The cool thing about core asteroids is they still have surface deposits that you can mine with your mining lasers, so we are going to start out by doing that. Let's get up in there, deploy our mining lasers, and get to work. Now the surface deposits on a low temperature diamond core asteroid, you will burn through that extremely quick as you can see. After we get all the surface deposits scarfed up, this is when the fun begins. This is when it's going to take just a little bit of skill. And first off, we're going to have to check out the asteroid fissures. 
you are going to be looking for a low strength fisher and there one is i'm going to target it and get ourselves into position so i can use my seismic charge launcher when using the seismic charge launcher the longer you hold down the button the stronger it will make its charge for the very first shot we are going to fire a high pressure charge into that low strength fisher after that i will target the next fisher it's just going to be a random one and i'm also going to pile in a full strength charge all right, so it looks like our detonation yield is getting pretty close now. So for the third fissure, I am going to just tap off a low pressure charge. It is really important that you try not to overcharge the fissures and go above the detonation yield. All right, sweet, we got the detonation yield in the perfect optimum position. Now we need to back off at least one kilometer and we can go ahead and detonate now. Make sure you are far enough back when your detonations explode or you will end up hurting yourself or possibly blowing yourself up. Once the asteroid explodes, the only thing you have left to do is bust out with your abrasion blaster and shoot off all those low temperature diamonds off its surface. After the explosion has happened, the asteroid will slowly break apart which makes it much easier to shoot the fragments off the surface with your abrasion blaster. As you're flying around the broken core asteroid, just be aware of where all the broken pieces of rocks are. Your collector limpets will suicide themselves into the rocks to try and get to your ship. For the most part, I just like to kind of sit back away from the rocks and make sure I have clear shots on all the surface deposits. This way it keeps my little limpets safe and they won't kill themselves all over the place. All right, it looks like we got them all. Now I will check my contacts just to make sure that there isn't anything left on the surface and it looks perfect. Now that you know what core asteroids look like and what you need to do to mine up all the low temperature diamonds inside, let's fast forward to the end of this run where I have everything loaded up again. Here we are at the end of our run. I've only been here for an hour and 30 minutes, which is amazing. Now let's top off our hopper now that my cargo racks are completely full. As you can see, those large chunks make a huge difference. Before we hop out of the rings, let me make sure the low temperature diamond price is the exact same as it was the last time I checked an hour and a half ago. I wanna make sure I'm gonna go to the right starport. Before you hop out of the rings to sell, make sure that you check the prices once again just to make sure that a better price didn't pop up or the price you checked last is even worse. Let's get this new location copy and paste it into my navigation panel and as you can see that is actually pretty far but we're still going to do it anyway. The jump range on the python kind of sucks but it's all going to work out in the end. And we didn't even get interdicted which is awesome. Total flight time on this run from takeoff to landing was 1 hour and 55 minutes which is absolutely badass. We ended up with three times the amount of low temperature diamonds as we did in the ASP Explorer and it only took us an extra 30 minutes to do that. As you can see the python is king in many ways. It can chew through those asteroids with the quickness and it can get back to the cell location with a huge cargo hold full of low temperature diamonds. Time to pawn off what I have in the cargo hold which is 217, almost 218 million worth of low temperature diamonds. Now all I have to do is sell off what we have in the refiner once they refine down and we're going to be good to go. The next ship we're going to be getting into is the Type 9 Heavy. The Type 9 and the load item I'm about to show you will cost you 187 million to pimp it out exactly the way I have mine. For hard points, we are just going to go with three 2D mining lasers. In this ship, I will not be looking for any cord asteroids at all. In your utility mount, you will go with four D shield boosters. For your core internals, we are going to A-rate everything except for life support and sensors. We will also keep the same fuel tank that the ship comes with. For your optional internals, you are going to go with two gigantic 8E cargo racks, a 7A collector limpet, a 6A shield generator, 5A collector limpet, 3A collector limpet, another 3A collector limit, a 4A fuel scoop, a 3A prospecting limpet, as well as your 2A refinery and a detailed surface scanner so you can find the deposits. This build will give you 11 collector limpets, which is absolutely awesome. Now that we got the build out of the way, let's check our fire groups. First fire group is Discovery Scanner on 1, Detailed Surface Scanner on 2, although I probably could delete this fire group because I don't really need it. Second fire group, Prospector Limpets on 1, Collectors on 2. Third fire group, All Mining Lasers on 1, Collector Limpets on 2. You guessed it, I'm going to be dropping into the exact same area and I'm going to find myself a nice little yellow patch so I can farm in a nice dense area. Now that we just hopped into the rings, it is very important like in the last three builds I showed you that you hang out and wait for the pirates to scan you. 
Doing the mining a little bit too soon can be dangerous because they will attack you. Just before we start mining, I am going to show you how to cover distance a little bit. As you can see, I am moving very, very slowly. The best thing you can do is close your cargo scoop, do a boost, and then open up your cargo scoop to use it as an air brake so you don't smash into the asteroid. You are going to need to be covering distance like I just showed you in between each one of these asteroids or it's going to mount up to a whole bunch of extra time in the field. For the first rock, I will demonstrate what happens when you try to run five mining lasers off this one power distributor. As you can see, the power distributor can't really handle it and the power just drops like a freaking stone every single time I do it. Check this out. In the Python, we were able to run three 2D mining lasers and we only had to go through our power distributor twice before we mined out the rock. As you can see, with five mining lasers on the Type 9, that is not the case. We are having to recharge our capacitor over and over. This will equate to more time in the field, which will cause us not to bring in as much money as the glorious Python would have. Even though we have 11 collector limpets, it's really hard for them to keep up with all those small chunks that the 1D mining lasers are creating. All those lasers might be causing us to blow off extra chunks. The only problem is all those extra chunks take longer to pick up. And it's also taking longer to chew through all these asteroids just due to the sheer volume of power that those mining lasers are using. Once we get this flying football stadium into position, let's just see how these three 2D mining lasers perform on this asteroid. You're going to notice that the power draw on my distributor is far less than it was when I was using five mining lasers. This equates to more burning time on the asteroid itself which also in turn means you're going to blow off much more large chunks. More bird time and blowing off larger chunks means you are most definitely going to chew through these asteroids much quicker. I do not understand why I'm not doing anything that must be taking a hit off my mod or something. Since we are in a large type class ship right now, let's go ahead and complain a little bit more about the supply and demand that affects large ships in general. The way supply and demand works is when you show up into a system, the system is going to take into account what you have in your cargo hold. It is actually going to treat you like you have already sold the items to them and it's going to discount the price accordingly, which sucks. Here's just one example of why it sucks. Let's say you show up to a system and that space station has a demand of 600 low temperature diamonds. In your cargo hold you end up having 512 and you're ready to sell them and you think you're going to be getting full price, right? Well, you would be absolutely wrong if you thought you were right. Instead, the space station is going to account for 512 in your cargo hold. Instead of giving you full price for the 512 that you do have on hand, instead it's going to recalculate the price to 98 demand and then pay you accordingly, which is going to take a huge hit to your pocketbook. Now let's apply those same rules to the Python, which has less than half the cargo capacity of this ship here. Based off of the rules of supply and demand, the Python will end up making more per ton than this big ship can. Of course my last collector limpet died before it can drop off the last piece. Alright, so we made it to our cell location. I didn't get interdicted again. I guess they were just picking on me in the adder for some odd reason. Total flight time from takeoff to landing was 3 hours and 50 minutes. We are going to rake in 576,762,000 and some change, which is pretty daggone win. At least it is right now, because tomorrow we'll have to do twice as many travels to make the same amount of money. In all likelihood, this will likely be my last run in a large ship until they get that supply and demand stuff hammered out. I guess for all future mining missions, we will just use the glorious Python. Over half a billion in one trip, that is not too shabby. Unfortunately, tomorrow that's going to be a different story. The cool thing is, is we started out in a sidewinder and then nine hours later we ended up with almost a billion units. Now you can do that exact same thing that I did, although with the daggone changes you're probably going to have to make twice as many trips, but it is what it is. Although I do not like the mining changes they did in this nerf, I am going to go ahead and try my very best not to get my panties in a wad. For now I'm going to hold out hope that FDev is going to get this all sorted out and hopefully supply and demand will be in much better shape over the coming weeks. For now, I'll keep mining in my Python, I'll see how the supply and demand thing works out, and I'll check and see on each one of the precious materials to see if any of them have spikes in their price, and if they do, I'm going to be right there to jump on top of it, farm it up, and sell it. I will likely also revisit the Sirius Astrometrics passenger missions to see if I can rake in a little bit more money than I can doing mining currently with the new nerf. Although I am pretty sure the passenger missions will be more profitable, but we're going to find out later. There you have it, Commanders. I hope you enjoyed my best start. 2020 guide for elite dangerous i hope you enjoyed this video just as much as i enjoyed making it and i will catch you in the next episode commanders peace